So in the previous video, we built up this precedence table. Now, in this video, we are going to draw the activity network for this using activity on arc, or activity on edge. Now, um, a couple of things first before uh, we start. My aim will be to try and avoid um, doing curved edges and also to have edges crisscrossing one another. Now, you might think, well, you know, why, why, Jack, would you do that? I mean, the reason is that I'm trying to make it as easy to read for the examiner as possible, because they'll have uh, a graph in the mark scheme that they will be comparing it against. And if I can draw it without uh, curved edges going all over the place and crisscrossing, uh, then all the better. Sometimes those kind of things may be unavoidable. Will you get necessarily marked down for doing those things? No. Um, I'm just trying to make it as clear cut as possible because if the next stage is uh, when we get onto it forward and backward passes then um, I'm going to have a little bit more difficulty using my diagram. Okay so uh, tools of the trade uh, would be a pencil and a ruler. So obviously I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm drawing a whiteboard so I can erase things very easily. So for you, you might just want to get pencil and ruler ready because uh, some of the things that we do uh, and the, like in the, the steps that we take isn't particularly obvious. So where do we start then? Well, uh, we've got activities A and B depend on nothing. Okay, So we're going to start off with a node and the two activities A and B coming out of it. So this starting node I'm going to label with zero. Now if you want to start labeling it from one that's perfectly fine. Um, really I'm just going to label the nodes as I add them in. Okay. Now, you might label them in a slightly different way, as I said. It's not really going to be too much of a problem. OK, so I put those in. Now, notice how I'm not connecting it immediately to other nodes. Each of the nodes in an activity network represents an event. So at this point, this is the starting event. OK, uh, you can also consider this, uh, because I'm going to be drawing this as a um, directed graph, this can also be referred to as the source. Now, that will make more kind of consistent sense when we get onto network flows. Um, and the finishing vertex will be the sink. OK, so that's my source. OK, so C depends on A and, and D depends on A as well. So from this point here, you might go, OK, well, I need C and D, like so, OK? Now, the next one, E, depends on B. Oh, I haven't labelled that one, so I'll label that with 1, because that was the next one that I've uh, reached. So um, E depends on B, so I'm going to have another node here, we'll label that number 2. And E is coming out of there. OK. So then I hit this problem. F relies on both C and E. Now, the problem here is that I've got C coming out here and I've got E coming out down there. Now, I could do something like this. OK, and D is now going to like crisscross over C uh, so that I can join these two up. OK, I could do that. But as I said, I'm going to try and avoid doing that um, just so that it kind of makes the graph and that network neater to work with. So I'm going to avoid that by relabeling this one as C and that one as D. So that now I can have C 
and E connecting up. And then F comes off of that. So let's have F coming up here. And that is going to be label number three. I noticed how I kind of uh, pointed out that I had a ruler, but I haven't used it yet. Um, <laughs> I can kind of draw relatively straight lines on here. OK, um, then we've got G is joining together D and F. Now, my lines are kind of going to connect. I think what I'll do is I'll just erase that one and bring that a little bit further along, something like that. Have that as D. And then here's a node. And here is G. They're relying on both D and F. And I'll label that number four. And there's no other activities, so I need a finishing node, uh, number five. And that is essentially the sink. OK, so you've got the source, everything flowing out of the source, then everything flowing into the sink. OK, so here is the activity network based on this precedence table. So the, the thing about um, not letting your edges crisscross one another and not having them uh, all kind of like curved all over the place, these are just kind of ways of making your diagram look as neat as possible. Um, it's not really kind of a rule in place because essentially if your graph is isomorphic to the graph that I've drawn, we know that from graph theory they are the same. Okay, so you can't get marked down for that. I have seen in the past, um, if you don't want kind of crisscrossing like that, a way around it is to draw something like this. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of hopping over your edge. Um, you can do that, that's an alternative, but um, I think if you are going to cross lines, it's just as good just to have them cross and avoid that. So there are different ways of tackling it. But this is how we can draw our first activity network based on this precedence table.